Welcome to Quarter Dev. In this series, we will walk through the different types of quizzes that you could create or add to your Bubble web app. In this video, we will set up the foundation of our app by adding the background images, styling, and putting all the inputs fields and buttons necessary to create, publish, and correct these quizzes. We start with an empty page, and before all, we need to activate the new responsive engine, which is still in beta until the date of recording this video. When it finished, we hit the preview button. For now, we don't need the debug mode, so let's change this to false. As a preliminary step, we uploaded the background and the banner to the database. And we prepared our color palette, which you could access through the setting, under the General tab. In our design, we aim to create an app style by avoiding the scroll bar, and to get the best structure we select, align to parent. As a background, we could set it up by changing the background style to image from here, but if we need more control, we bring the image element to the stage. Because we use an image from the database, Bubble provides an access to Imgex processing. To set it up, we need to click more at the end of the image input line. For big image sizes, like 500k and more, it is better to decrease the quality percentage, check the auto enhance and the resize option, and finally, switch run mode to stretch. From the layout tab, we center the element and fix the width and height to 100%. For the banner, we do the same thing for image processing, but no need for reducing quality. And from the layout tab, check if the alignment is in the top middle, the width to 720px at maximum, and add some margin. With a quick preview, we could notice that the banner is detached from the background. To give the page more consistency, we will merge them by changing the borders to curved with a big roundness size, setting the horizontal and the vertical offset to zero, and adding a wide blur and spread radius shadow with white color. Now, it looks far away better. For the main container of the quizzes, we pick white color for the background. Add a radius for the corner, and a radius shadow to keep it pop up from the background. From the Layout tab, we choose a column as a container layout and check the gap space to avoid any overlapping between elements contrary to Align Parent. The position will be in the middle, width 1080px maximum. We make sure not to exceed the average height of regular mobile devices. And to allow some flexibility, we keep fit height to content checked. The top margin is 100px, enough to prevent the container from covering our image banner and at the end 14px as padding from all sides. Inside the container, we add first the multi-line input for the question input field. Let's be more specific with the placeholder. For the style, we prefer to keep it simple with Arial font and without any border. From the Layout tab, we check the Collapse when hidden, this is necessary when we alternate between Create and Preview mode. We still prefer simplicity, so we remove any conditional styling. Under the Multi-Line input, we place a text element that will be used to display the question. And that means that its content will be the question input's value. 
We keep the same style with this element, just a black font color to differentiate from the create mode. As is the case with the question input, we check the collapse when hidden for the question display. For the quiz group, we configure its layout to just reserve the space and work on it for upcoming videos. For now, we take the column as provisional selection for the container layout, a full width, and a minimum height, which follows the same rule of the main container to keep avoiding the scroll bar. Finally, we end up with a group in the footer that will contain the action buttons. For styling, we make an empty box with a solid border and a roundness size of 20px. As a container layout, we select row, and for the alignment, the space between option. We center the element to the middle, keep its width fit to its content, fix the height, and add some padding. Inside this group, we add three buttons. The first button will be for previewing the quiz. It is a text element, but with some styling will look like a regular blue button. The reason that makes us didn't choose the button element, in this case, is the absence of the padding parameter, thus, the element will not keep a space when changing the inner text. For the second button, we will use an icon for quiz editing. To avoid confusion, it is important to fill in the tooltip text when using icons or images as buttons. This button will be used after the quiz preview, so it should be invisible when the page loads. And for sure, this size needs to be reduced. We come to the third button. It will be used to save the quiz in the database. To get a clear representative button, we combine two icons inside a group. On the left side, we select an arrow icon pointing in the right direction. We choose the same color as the editing icon button, then reduce the size to the group element scale. For the right icon, we duplicate this icon by pressing the Ctrl D of the keyboard. We change the width of the generated icon to get a square size, and from the Appearance tab, we replace the arrow icon with the database icon. After that, we select both icons and group them in a row container. As a container alignment, we choose Centered, and then we increase the width to give some free space for the button. As we notice, the group element does not support tooltip functionality. As a solution, to overcome the situation, we will use the tooltips of both icons with the same text, so when we hover over one of them, it will appear as a normal tooltip for the whole group. As a separator and using the border of the editing button, we check the definition of each border independently and change only the right border to solid. As a final touch, we specify this icon on hover with a different color. We copy this style condition and place it in the grouped icons conditional tab, replacing the hovered item with the database button group. Now, when we preview our page, we can notice that the loading sequence started by the container. To prioritize the showing of the background, we delay the visibility of the main container until the entire page is loaded. And then from the Layout tab, we uncheck its visibility on page load and check Collapse when hidden. As you can see the result is quite decent. As a final step, we need to identify the three quiz modes, Create, Preview and Check Answers mode, using a custom state. From the main container, we click on the I button, and we create one and name it mode with the type number. 
For the default value, we type 1. The value of 1 refers to the create mode, while the value of 2 refers to the preview mode and the value of 3 remains for the check answers mode. We have already configured the initial state of each element when the page loads, so we only need to configure them for the two other modes. Starting with the question input element which should be invisible if the mode value is not 1. We copy this expression for the rest of the elements. The question display changes to be visible, without forgetting to hide it when loading the page. When the mode value is 2, the button function changes from quiz preview to check answers with a green background. And when this value is 3 this text will display the score of the quiz inside a red background. Finally, when it is not in the create mode, the edit icon becomes visible. At first, to change quiz mode, we'll use the preview button workflow that will only be valid if the quiz is in the create mode, refers to the value 1. And the question input is not empty. If both of these conditions are valid, we could set the mode to 2. To set it back to 1, we will use the edit button, and to brief this task, we copy this workflow and simply change the value to 1. In case the question entry is empty, we could warn it by adding a conditional style to the element. For this, we are going to use a custom state, alert, with a type, yes or no, and no by default. The check will be triggered when the preview button is clicked. So we need to copy the first workflow and change the validation condition to be when the question input is empty. This warning will be for a period of time. So the alert state will be first, yes. Pause the workflow for 3 seconds, or 3000, in milliseconds. And finally, reset that state to no. We will use the bottom border. To specify this, we first need to check, set each border independently, to hide all borders and set all border radii to zero. For the condition expression, we check the question input if it's empty. And the alert status if it's yes. This changes the style to solid, more precisely, visible. And the bottom border to be with a red color. We end up adding the third workflow, for the quiz button. This workflow will be triggered when the mode value is 2, which refers to check answers. And as an action, it will change the mode from value 2 to value 3, which displays the quiz result. Everything is ready now, so it's time to do one last check. To get a detailed check, we will re-enable the debug mode by pressing preview from the bubble editor. When we click on the quiz preview, the workflow that will be triggered is the one that has the void of the question input as a valid condition which is, in this case, the warning style.
Now that the question is filled, the preview action becomes valid, accordingly, the quiz mode changes to preview mode with the value 2. By pressing the check answers, the workflow tests if the mode value is 2, if yes, then the mode value changes to 3 and displays the quiz score. For the edit quiz, its workflow is valid by default, which means that no conditions need to be checked. So the quiz returns to create mode with the value 1. To preview the mobile version, we disable debug mode. Then press F12. And finally click on the tablet mode. Note that this procedure may differ from one browser to another. As with the desktop version, everything works as expected with the mobile version, ready to install our quizzes.